Hi, this is Dave from PC Gamer, and we're diving into Intel's Rocket Lake CPU announcement from CES 2021. Rocket Lake is the codename for Intel's 11th gen desktop processors, and they're very different beasts from the 10th gen Comic Lake chips it released last year. Sure, they're still using the geriatric 14 nanometer production process, but Intel has taken the unprecedented step of creating a backport of the 10 nanometer CPU design it created for its 10th gen Ice Lake laptop chips. Except this time it's called Cypress Cove, not Sunny Cove. The Rocket Lake CPUs are strange silicon beasts, and seemingly more of a reaction to both Intel's own manufacturing failings and a very powerful new rival in AMD's Zen 3 powered CPUs. The Cypress Cove backport is a necessary evil given the struggles Intel has had getting solid yield out of its 10 nanometer manufacturing, especially at high core counts. Having yet another 14 nanometer CPU is a matter of consternation in many sectors, not least for its investors. But for us PC gamers, it's likely to mean Intel once more can lay claim to the fastest gaming processor around. The up to 19% IPC increase that Rocket Lake promises is in line with what the Ice Lake chips offered over their 9th gen brethren, and means that despite the fact that the top chip of last year, uh, the Core i9-10900K, had 10 cores, that's going to be slower than the Core i9-11900K this year, which has only got 8 cores. Indeed, we were treated to Hitman 3 running side by side on Rocket Lake and Comet Lake in the demo we had earlier, and the numbers were very much in favour of the newer chips. That core count shift does feel like a bit of an issue, however, and it's not going to be possible for Intel to suggest that shifting from 10 cores with Comet Lake back to 8 cores with Rocket Lake is anything other than a backward step, no matter how much it wants to talk about a focus on maximum real world performance. But it does make sense. In a briefing with Intel's Brant Gutteridge ahead of the CES announcement, he admitted the step down was purely about the number of 14 nanometer cores it could fit into the die given the advanced core architecture. It was, after all, based on the 10 nanometer design, which is essentially smaller. To be honest, I'd happily ditch the XE GPU cores that Intel has dropped into Rocket Lake if it meant we could stick with 10 cores. I mean, who uses processor graphics anyway when you've got a decent discrete GPU? But there is one benefit of the integrated CPUs that we haven't seen before always on QuickSync, and that's coming in with the Rocket Lake CPUs. Previously, you had to switch on the processor graphics to enable Intel's dedicated media encoder decoder silicon, but with Rocket Lake, it's always available. That should mean it can take the load off the GPU or the CPU itself if you're gaming and recording or streaming at the same time. Intel wouldn't go into detail about whether you could expect any sort of performance boost from always on QuickSync, but hopefully we'll hear more soon. But obviously it's actual gaming performance that means the most to us. And so Intel has provided us with some early numbers. Now these come from Intel's own tests, remember, so take them with as much sodium chloride as you prefer until we get the chips into our own independent test rigs to give them a good going over. Still, across the board, Intel is claiming a performance win over AMD's Ryzen 9 5900X, if only by a negligible percentage, between 2 and 8% at best. Now remember, that's one of our favourite gaming CPUs of today, so the fact that it's got any sort of performance win for Rocket Lake is still pretty impressive. But it is worth pointing out that these numbers are taken at 1080p, where the Nvidia RTX 3080 Intel is using is going to be idly kicking its heels, and therefore this is likely as great as the gaming performance Delta will get. Running your $500 CPU and your $700 GPU at anything above 1080p, you'll probably not see any difference in performance between AMD and Intel. Indeed, at 4K, you'll see nothing. But pricing is going to be an interesting one for Rocket Lake. Can it really charge the same for an 8-core i9-11900K as it did for a 10-core i9-10900K? That's especially tough when the 12-core Ryzen 9 5900X is an incredibly tempting chip. Well, when it's available anyway. Which brings us to one last thing. If the availability of Intel's Rocket Lake chips can far outstrip AMD's stock of Zen 3 CPUs for anything like a competitive price, then Intel will have its own manufacturing facilities to thank, just for giving it that little bit of edge in performance and maybe some actual retail visibility. We'll likely know more because these chips are going to be launching before the end of March, so sometime in Q1, so keep an eye out for Rocket Lake. And keep an eye out for more news from CES 2021 from us here at PC Gamer. So thanks for watching. Goodbye.